Battlefield 5 is totally unacceptable in way too many ways to be worth anywhere near $60. The game is both one of the greatest games I played this year and also the very worst product to release this year heading into 2019. It is the very worst example of everything we've come to fear about AAA gaming and it's happening to a game and a franchise that simply doesn't deserve this treatment. Battlefield used to be a hollowed name in the FPS realm. It was the place for a more large-scale squad-based alternative to the hectic and close quarters focused combat of Call of Duty, and the two had very dedicated fan bases. But today, you would know it. Battlefield 5's pre-order numbers lagged 85% behind Black Ops 4. EA moved the game out of a crowded October knowing that it simply couldn't compete with games like Red Dead. And oh, by the way, most people seem to forget the game even existed by the time it released in EA Early Access. But Battlefield 5's problems extend well beyond just bugs. This isn't a case of a game coming out with just a few animated corpses and some poppin. This is an example of a game doing almost everything it can on the surface to insult every person that bothers to spend $60 on it. But whose fault is it? Today we're going to look at Battlefield 5 a little bit differently. It's actually not all EA's fault this time, even though they're certainly a part of it. So what we're going to do is a running tally. You'll see it in the corner of the screen. Every point is a problem you can attribute to either DICE or EA. And we'll let that tally run and run and run and we'll see where most if not all of the problems actually lie with battlefield 5 before we get to the great which won't really be attributing points to anywhere because as you can probably already imagine the great lies in one spot so let's look at battlefield 5 from that perspective whatever it actually is now and move forward from there so to get started let's take a look at maybe the most interesting reality of battlefield 5 and also one of the worst Battlefield 5 is the most unabashedly incomplete product you will ever see. It's literally shoved down your throat the second you hit the main menu. Want to hop into single player? Awesome. You'll be greeted with three vignettes and a fourth that's grayed out because it doesn't release until a month after launch. Want to play the Battle Royale mode? Awesome. Except you won't see that released until possibly March of 2019, nearly half a year after the game's release. Want the Tides of War? Oh wait, that's grayed out as well. That's also coming a month after launch. Much like the game's co-op mode, which also won't come for a month after release. So let's make this concise. Single player? Incomplete. Battle Royale? Incomplete. Co-op? Incomplete. Multiplayer? Incomplete. Hard to be a glass half full here when all the water's been drained from the cup. The problem is, which of these two possibilities is reality? Is the game unfinished because EA rushed DICE to get it out before it was done, or is it incomplete and outside of Battle Royale, having content withheld from it to string people along and artificially boost the player base after begrudgingly getting rid of the season pass? Given that some of the content drops just weeks after release, I'd bet it's the latter. EA is selling a $60 product that is nothing more than a free-to-play game. It's so unfinished it wants you to know it's unfinished and it's a package that feels incomplete as a result. It's got its bare bones multiplayer modes, but it's a $60 game that wants to give you what you paid for whenever it feels like it, not when you buy it. It's deceptive, it's a point for EA, and worse yet, one of the few promises it fulfills seems half-baked and full-hearted in at least one way. Battlefield 5 is another step in the wrong direction once you start playing it as well. Before we get to the very great of Battlefield 5, we have to talk about its two or three lowest points. Broken games are an interesting phenomenon. 75 players can hop in and have an overwhelming amount of issues from the moment they turn the game on, and the other 25 run the game smooth as butter and never see so much as an engine hiccup. For the second time this month, there's a game where that piece of the pie is probably a lot smaller than 25%. As of this writing, the game's problems literally extend to the moment you start the game. The main menu consists of in-engine moving images of soldiers. The problem is, the engine's pop-in problem, even when you're playing, is so bad that there's literally pop-in on the main menu. The character images will pop in first. And the textures on their clothes, and the textures on their skin, and then the textures on their guns, one after the other, then their features, then maybe a tank behind them, and then maybe an airplane. The menus literally aren't finished. 
You hop into a single player game and you're gonna have the same problem there. Cutscenes will freeze for 30 seconds or so at a time, cars will get stuck on objects and then attempt to drive on their own, and the game will sputter to run. And on Xbox, there are apparently even typos in the subtitles. Seriously, they didn't even finish those, which thankfully I didn't run into on PS4 or maybe just missed. Hop into multiplayer and this is where the problems really start to become grating. Again, much like Fallout 76 the very same week, the servers are not prepared to be played on. It's almost shocking how often this is a problem at launch for games at this point. You will run into enough disconnects, or at least I did, to last a lifetime. But it's Frostbite, the game's engine, that is once again rearing its ugly head. When you die, you'll be stuck in floors, walls, clipping through objects. Maybe ironic given how much pop in there is constantly, which wouldn't be a big deal if a main part of squad play wasn't the ability to revive you, which sometimes can't happen because of these glitches. And beyond that, with a poor frame rate, you'll be lucky not to drop enough frames to even kill someone in the first place. All too often, if you're attempting to shoot someone at range, you will drop those frames, or doors won't respond to your first input command, leaving you a soldier in the open trying to run through a closed door. And this is all if the game doesn't crash on you first. Most, if not all of this, can be fixed, and on some systems and PC, it might be worse than others, but that's the problem. They didn't bother to fix it before they put it out. Most of these issues existed in beta, and yet here we are with the same ones. Battlefield 5 is unfinished, and even when it is working, well, its offering is... We're going to get to maybe the most insulting aspect of Battlefield soon, actually right after this, but I think it's worth talking about one of the more confusing elements of the game, and a point that more likely than not falls in DICE's favor. Battlefield 1's single player vignettes were a bright spot in an oftentimes enjoyable game. They had character, they had heart, and most importantly, they were genuinely worth playing. Battlefield 5's vignettes seem more like a cynical marketing ploy than they do a substantial inclusion. And unlike the performance problems, this is a subjective issue. 5's vignettes all run a bit longer than the ones that 1 offered, but where 1 was focused on telling stories of hope and sometimes sorrow in character, 5 takes a very somber, dark approach and it feels hollow. There are some really cool moments in these stories. At one point you actually get to ski down a mountain to start a mission, but outside of these brief moments, there's not much to care about. For example, one vignette has you following the path of a supposed bank robber who's been placed on the battlefield. The game tries its best to force a father-son relationship early in the story, and by the end of it all, you'll have forgotten most of the so-called character of the two 15 minutes after you hop into multiplayer. Hell, even the intro is just a remixed version of the same idea they played with in one that's a little bit less impactful. It doesn't help that the dreary tone makes them more depressing than it does anything else. It doesn't help that also, for far too much of these vignettes, the game tries to force you into stealth, which isn't fun, and quite frankly the AI and mechanics are just not built for. Why FPS games decide to rely so heavily on stealth in games where people are looking for the total opposite will never not be a question unanswered. DICE simply lost some of the magic they created last time out. This year's campaign feels way too much like, look guys, not only do we have a single player campaign, but it's inclusive and takes place everywhere with all walks of life, so buy our game because we included it and our competition didn't. Well, none of that particularly matters, EA and DICE, if that campaign isn't very good. And here, for me, it just isn't. But who cares, right? It's single player. Well, EA's recent actions tell us, well shit, I guess I have to talk about it. These are people who are uneducated, who don't understand. If you don't recognize that quote, that's head of EA Patrick Soderlund, in reference to Battlefield fans who were unhappy with the agenda pushing of Battlefield 5 and its marketing campaign. Either accept it or don't buy the game, I'm fine with either. Different quote, same interview. That is the head of EA calling their most vocal supporters uneducated and literally challenging them not to buy the game. You'll be hard pressed to find anything, even remotely like the attack EA levied upon its consumer base throughout this process. The fact of the matter is, EA made a push for women soldiers, placing them front and center of the marketing campaign and trying to play a bit too much with historical realities while attempting to persuade us that it was authentic. 
and it's all nothing more than an attempt to drum up conversation about their game and drive sales. These decisions weren't made with good intent, maybe in DICE's corner, but they certainly weren't for EA, who makes the marketing decisions. They don't actually want to be inclusive, they want to seem like they're worth supporting. They want to be a Nike with a sky-high stock jump. The problem is, they have no clue at this point what they're doing. They say things like, for years we've been asked when women will be in the game and we finally do it, and people are mad? People, for the most part, aren't mad that you included women, they're mad because you insulted people by trying to paint the way you included them as authentic, and then acted like it was the most important part of your game and everyone should want it for that very reason. No, we want you to make a great game, we don't care about how you're viewed publicly, and the release date of Battlefield 5 shows that you need to better prioritize and maybe spend that marketing money somewhere else. And the pre-order numbers show that the vast majority of your audience don't care for what you think they do. But underneath all of this, everything discussed so far, what's left is, well, a lot of great. Once again, we have a game that's going to spend at least a good chunk of 2019 being a near total disappointment because of what it is under all the nonsense. Battlefield 5 is a great multiplayer shooter when it's working and you're not so upset with its publisher that you won't give it a shot. Despite Frostbite's problems, Battlefield 5 is gorgeous, truly breathtaking at times, and it's a genuinely immersive experience. If you turn off the HUD, which I did for most of my playtime, and give it a round or two, you will be engaged with maybe the most unique multiplayer FPS experience you'll have this year. The new building mechanics don't take you out of the game as some expected they would. They just allow you to make very small fortifications that add a bit of strategy to the game and they don't make it unbalanced. And very little is unbalanced in the ground game. Weapons all handle superbly, classes feel more defined and balanced while still encouraging squad play. Operations are back and still damn cool. And maps, while not all being hits, are still a bright spot for dice. And all of this, including hit or miss changes like making spotting recon only, make for the most strategic shooter dropping during the holiday season. There's nothing quite like holing up in a blown up house with your squad to defend a point, a sniper to spot, two people building fortifications, and your best gunner waiting for the approach. Having your fortifications blown to shreds by a tank and having to improvise from there, it's more than exhilarating, it's a damn good time. If this game was given eight more months to a year to develop, it would be one of the finest on the markets. Unfortunately, that hypothetical is not and will not come to pass. But a couple months from now, if you can find a team, hop into what may be a match of grand operations, I'm willing to bet you'll have an hour-long experience that you really just can't find elsewhere. Battlefield 5 shares far too many parallels with Fallout 76. Two games made by two companies that seem to have totally lost sight of what their audience expects or wants from them. But where Fallout 76 was a poorly executed, decent idea, Battlefield 5 was a good idea and a damn good game, but it's also just a giant slap in the face. It seems intentionally manipulative and should be cause for concern for the future. There was a group of people that commended the steps in the right direction it seemed EA was making. No loot boxes, no $50 season pass, but now it appears they've decided that in order to keep people playing, Instead of that season pass, they'll just dangle an unfinished product in their face instead and say look what you get to play in a month or two or three or four. So what happens when Anthem is released this spring? Do we all pre-order based on pretty words or a beta and fall down the same trap? At some point we have to accept a very obvious reality. This is just who EA is, and anything and any studio they touch is inevitably going to suffer similar if not the same repercussions. We have to stop pretending like the next game will be different, just because your toxic ex-girlfriend says it will be. EA is who they are. You either stay in the dysfunctional relationship, or get out with your money in hand. I woke up this morning before this video was meant to come out and needed to film this because this needs to be said, and it's something I thought about last night, and I didn't write about in the, in the piece. It needs to be said that, yes, almost all of this is exclusively the fault of EA, and not necessarily DICE, who made a great game and tried to put it out, but the problem here is, 
I know a lot of people say things like, well, they told us that Battle Royale wouldn't be out until, you know, a half a year later after launch. They told us that Tides of War Live Service wouldn't be out until a month later. They told us that single player wouldn't have its last or be completed until a month later. They, they, they told us it doesn't matter. Let's not be manipulated by a company so good at manipulating us. If these things are meant to come weeks after launch, they're probably done, or at least they better be, right? They should be at least finished by now, or coming near completion. So do one of two things. Either delay the game so the game's completed when it comes out, or here's an idea. Don't put these things out the way you're putting them out. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is the only reason that so much of, of the content of the game is coming a month later is so that they can keep hype rolling through the holiday season. They're manipulating us. They want to pretend like they're giving us free content down the line because they got rid of the season pass. So this is them doing us a favor. They're not doing us a favor by releasing a game that's not finished and giving us the rest of it that is completing it later. They're not doing us a service. They're hoping to keep us engaged when they know we probably won't be. That's not a good thing. They're not doing something for us. They're just manipulating us. And I think that's important to say. So for all those people out there having that sunken cost fallacy feeling of, oh, well, I spent money on it. Might as well fight to the end to, to feel like I got my money's worth. You got to admit sometimes that you didn't, even if you're enjoying the game, which underneath is great. We're being manipulated and we have to acknowledge that. Well, guys, that was it for today's doc. And as always, the start of a dialogue. I want to know what you guys think. What do you think of Battlefield 5 as it stands today? Do you agree that underneath all of the nonsense is a great game? Or can you just not support EA at this point with anything they put out from any developer for this matter? And I think maybe more importantly, are you worried like I am that DICE is going to end up being cannibalized by EA like so many other studios? I, I just, I don't think that it's possible to continue to sustain franchises like Battlefield if they continue to release them like this. But who knows? I, I, as I'll find out from you guys, maybe you won't even buy the game, maybe you will, but let me know down in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're not yet a member of this team, press subscribe. I put out gaming analysis and examinations just like this one twice a week. Every once in a while, it's more than that. Sometimes it's less, but hit subscribe so you do not miss any. My Twitter handle will be in the top pinned comment down below. It's there where you can follow me to get an idea of what games I'm playing, talk about things that aren't games sometimes, find out what things are coming to the channel next, participate in polls. So follow me on that Twitter handle down below. I do want to say that maybe more so now than ever with both Fallout 76 and Battlefield being out, um, it, it's it's really hard to justify recommending a purchase of, of a game like this anymore. I think we have to be better uh, about where we put our money because we put ourselves in a position as a collective community not as individuals in in a position where this is okay for publishers to do because they know how many of us will buy it anyways uh, we need to turn those tides so just keep that in mind when you make your purchasing decisions this holiday season but buy whatever you want enjoy whatever you want until next time guys i'm out